This program is designed and produced by the community with the support of Kojiko TV. Hi, it's Mayor Walter Senzik and welcome back to our home with Mayor Senzik. We are just kicking off the March break, so for the students out there that are enjoying what is hoping to be lovely spring weather, be safe, enjoy our community, and look forward to going to the museum or explore our downtown, head out to our parks and trails, and enjoy all that St. Catharines has to offer. But most importantly, have a safe March break. It's important today to talk about March break because March break is for students who are in high school, elementary school that get to have a bit of a pause during the learning academic year. And after the March break here in St. Catharines, we're hosting a youth forum. It's the first youth forum that we've hosted in a long while. And the theme this year is your city, your future. So we have two young people from our community who are joining me today. This show will feature Hopeberg, a grade 12 graduate at Governor Simcoe Secondary School, home of the Redcoats. I am a Redcoat myself. I went to Governor Simcoe, so it's great to have one of the Governor Simcoe's outstanding students here joining us, as well as Alice Marie Nachiwala, who is the president of Niagara College Student Union, and I'm also on the board of Niagara College, yes. and Alice Mary has done a wonderful job representing the students at Niagara College and they will both be at the Youth Forum. They've been actively involved in putting it together. It's being held on March 22nd at the First Ontario Performing Arts Centre and it's an event designed by the youth of our community for the youth of our community to talk about their city and their future. So Hope is a grade 12 student at Governor Simcoe in French immersion. I'm not going to engage her in French. I will just say <laughs> bonjour, comment ça va? Uh, ça va bien, merci. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, thank you for having me. Um, at Governor Simcoe, I am the student body president. It's an awesome council I have. I get to organize our student council meetings and help run events such as grade 9 welcome day, spirit days, spirit assemblies, coffee houses, and semi-formals. And you've also been involved in the community. You've organized a fundraiser to support Syrian refugees in Niagara and local backpack drives for students in Zambia. Mm -hmm. So you also have that global perspective. And you'll be attending Brock University in the fall? Yes. Look at this. We're keeping our youngest <laughs> and brightest here in our community attending Brock University, where I believe you'll be taking... Political sciences. And Wonderful. And French and Spanish. And where do you want to go with that? My dream job is to be a diplomat. A diplomat. Okay. <laughs> Alice Mary was born and raised in Uganda. Yes. And where in Uganda? Um, Kampala, that's Kampala. the capital city of Uganda. So, really? Yep. So how big would the capital city be? How many people? Uh, we're talking, it's, it's a pretty little country to begin with, um, but we're talking probably uh, 2,000, 2,500 people. Wow. <laughs> In the capital? Yes. So that's interesting from a yeah. geopolitical point of view. Mm -hmm. um, coming from a community like that to St. Catharines, which mm -hmm. is a bit larger. Oh, yeah. And in 2014, you moved to Canada for education, graduated from Niagara College mm -hmm. with an advanced diploma in graphic design. Mm -hmm. And during your three years at Niagara College, you were also an elected official on the Niagara College Student Administrative Council for, as VP for two years, and now you're currently in your role in, as the student government president. So you also are active on social media. Mm -hmm. So. Tell us a bit about your YouTube channel that you have. <laughs> um, I figured in this day and age, everyone's online, everyone's on the internet. And, and one thing I am pretty guilty of is sitting there and watching YouTube videos. Um, and as a college student, uh, most of my research or my leisure time, I'm on YouTube. So I figured um, as president, I might as well reach out to the students of Niagara College in a way that 
they don't have to get up and go anywhere, just switch on their phones or their laptops. So I came up with this um, segue called Catch Up with Alice Mary. Um, I do love ketchup. A lot of ketchup is always um, on my food. Um, I made fun of that it's an addiction, but I don't believe it's an addiction. Um, so um, I figured I might as well use that and have, or eat something with ketchup, or ask the students to tell me to eat something with ketchup while I ask them questions or answer their questions um, or their concerns and let them know what I'm doing in office for them. Um, and that's a catchy way I figured I might get to them and for them to listen to begin with. So it's one of three minute videos that I put out on, on, face, um, on Facebook through YouTube. Um, which is pretty fun. I've got a good um, feedback from students and I want to keep it um, going and alive. So, yeah. So, I love ketchup too, <laughs> yes. but I can't come up with a program now called <laughs> Ketchup with the Mayor because Sorry, then, you I can't. Would, then I, then I, I would be, I would be <laughs> liberating it from your show. I'd have to come up with something different like Pickles, <laughs> could, pickles with the Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> we could feature you and catch up with us. I would today. love to. I would love to. So, make sure, make yes. an appointment, yes. and you and I will have ketchup because I like ketchup on everything nice. as well. Perfect. We'll do that. So, it's interesting. I, I want to start, uh, Alice Mary, and just in terms of coming to Canada, coming to St. Catharines. What were a couple of things that you noticed right away in terms of uh, differences mm -hmm. that you saw or felt? Mm -hmm. uh, when I came to Canada, specifically um, Niagara College, um, I, my program is in Welland, um, but I decided to live in St. Catharines because, first of all, the Canadian culture for me um, was very warm. Everyone was very nice. Um, not to say that everywhere else people are not nice, but the Canadians... Um, that I've met or that I've lived with are very friendly. Like you walk down the street and somebody's like, oh, hello, good morning. And it's like, good morning, this is new. Um, but it's a good news. So I must say that uh, the fact that I'm still in St. Catharines or still in Canada, I did not drop out after two years of my program. I felt very comfortable to be me, um, to be myself um, and to be um, the person that I want to be or grow into. So. The Canadian culture, specifically in St. Catharines, because that's the only place I've lived mm -hmm. ever since I came to Canada, is very welcoming and, and embracing. So that's, that's wonderful one of to the hear. good things, yeah. And it's great to see that perspective because you've, you've got that global perspective mm -hmm. and having, having come here and seeing what we have to offer. Many times we, as a community unto ourselves, we don't necessarily see ourselves mm -hmm. in, in that light. So it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a great validation. And, yeah. I hope you continue to enjoy your time here and we'll get further into what the future holds for yourself and, mm -hmm. and hope your involvement in community, what drives that? Like you're, you know, you know, as a grade 12 student, I remember when I was back in grade 12 at Governor Simcoe, wasn't really involved in the community very much <laughs> or playing sport and sort of just sticking to myself. But what drives that community spirit for you? Um, I think it's this really strong feeling that there's something greater out there, mm -hmm. and we really have the power to make things better when we see fit, where we see opportunities. Mm -hmm. I have a really awesome support group at my school. It's called the Simcoe Outreach Society, and that's where we take on different initiatives globally. That's where we took on backpacks for students in Zambia, and we go on and sponsor Christmas gifts for families in Jillian's Place, run food drives, winter clothing drives, and the response that you get back is, that's really the drive, mm -hmm. it's the warm, it's the knowing that you've made a difference, and it's encouragement to keep doing it and keep doing it. So how many people, how many students would be involved in this outreach program? Um, in our club right now, we have about 20 ish mm -hmm. and five really awesome ambitious teachers who help us along with everything. Well, that's great. And so there's this perception in the mm. community that a lot of youth today are disengaged. Uh, you hear about the, the self-interest of the millennials. The, mm -hmm. They're focused on themselves. They're on their Instagrams doing the, mm -hmm. the yeah. old selfies. So it seems like you're, that you're breaking that, that, that perception down mm -hmm. by doing what you're doing. And do you, do you think that that's a, a reality in the youth culture or do you think it's a, a reputation that's not really earned by youth, that there, you see more of your fellow students engaged? Um, that's tough. I see that it's like there is a strong presence on social media and there's a lot of self-involvement, like you said. I think that there is also groups set aside who do see passion in this, and I think more and more youth are looking around and seeing, like, look at what everybody's doing, like, look at what we can do. And we're slowly getting to having more and more people getting engaged and getting involved. And I think it's, just, it's really awesome, everything we have going on. 
So I want to ask Alice Mary the same kind of question in terms of youth engagement. So mm -hmm. uh, you, you're more post-secondary, so mm -hmm. it's an old, older cohort coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. Do you see do you see that engagement in community, and is it global? Tell us a bit about what you're seeing at Niagara College with the students there. Um, most of the students at Niagara College, I would say, because um, the college is more as the one-year, two-year, three-year program, so students come and go. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like university. Um, but when it comes to involvement, uh, personally, when I got involved, um, I figured it gives you a rewarding feeling, like you said. Like There is that feeling of, you know what, this is good. I'm making some changes. And with um, the community or the youth this, in this day and age, um, it's mostly wh what am I doing with my friends, what my friends think, and, and it sometimes comes off as a, uh, but at the end of the day, if my opinion means something to you as your peer, um, at the end of the day, if I'm, ad if I'm advising you to come with me, let's go do something together, let's go help out, let's go clean up the community together, um, we come together as a group, and most of the things that are done or community outreaches are done, are mostly done in groups, um, which shows uh, that there is that unity, or it does um, things are done better or well as a group together. And specific with college, um, we have the co-curricular record things that are records that are showing I'm excelling in class, yes, but I am doing this extra activity that are giving me a, a higher uh, step ahead than everyone else. So with those. Um, rec with those recognitions that the college provides and says, hey, we see you've been volunteering. When you're ready to get out there, your resume is going to look like this. You're going to mm -hmm. have a volunteer here, 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 here. So that also encourages the, the youth in um, college to go out and help. So you are right. There is that perception of I'm always on my phone, I'm taking Instagram. But then maybe I'm communicating with other students on Facebook or right. in Instagram, and we're doing some sort of movement to help out I don't know, maybe some homeless uh, individuals. So you are right to a specific extent, but at the end of the day, I think um, with the technology we have, there is more uh, and bigger things that we can do as youth to support the community. And I think that's the, the part of the Media We movement mm -hmm. that was created by the, uh, the Kilberger family, yep. uh, uh, Craig and his brother. So hope you've been to Media We. Mm -hmm. So how has that influenced your way of thinking? Um, it was just incredible to watch all of these celebrities, global leaders, local leaders step mm -hmm. away from their celebrity lives and show us how they're really making a difference in the global community. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's not only you sing, but you see the other stuff matters. Mm -hmm. And the entire day, it's really vocalizing how much they see potential for us and how much they encourage us youth to go forward mm -hmm. and create bigger things. And it's that sense of empowerment that's mm -hmm. really important, really significant when mm -hmm. you can get that across a big group of people. Mm -hmm. is it's just a boost of energy that you can do anything you right. want to do. And I think that's what we're trying to do with the Youth Forum is bring that sense of momentum, bring that sense of empowerment. And after the break, we're going to talk about the Youth Forum. We're going to talk about the subject matter that we want to touch on mm -hmm. with the youth that will be attending and hopefully some of the outcomes that we want to see come from it. So mm -hmm. after the break, we'll be talking about the Youth Forum that's coming up in St. Catharines on March 22nd. Hi, and welcome back to Our Home with Mayor Senzik. Today we're talking uh, about the youth forum that's coming up on March 22nd. And joining us on the show, we have Hope and Alice Mary, who are talking, they're actually organizing, helping to organize the youth forum. And they're going to be talking about the subject matter that we're trying to tackle in this youth forum that's coming up in the city of St. Catharines. So Hope, just want to talk about broadly from a high school perspective. The, the theme of this forum is your future, your city. So what are some of the, the key issues that you would like to bring forward or see discussed at a youth forum? Um, I'd say a few of the main issues that are really affecting my peers and teens today are have to do with mental health, um, engagement within the school and community, and economic opportunities for us in the future. And mental health has received a lot of attention throughout mm -hmm. the past few years, as it should. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot more support being offered to us, but there's still a strong stigma of 
reaching out to that support, being called crazy or called there's something wrong. Why are you going to the guidance office? Why are you reaching out? Um, there's just got to be more discussion. It's got to be more open. And I'm really excited to see that come into play at the forum. Mm -hmm. uh, youth engagement, as we discussed, it's, um, we need to show you that there is opportunity here in the city mm -hmm. and abroad. There is potential for them. And amazing things can happen when they put themselves out there. That's another thing I'm really looking forward to speaking about there. And the third point that's really engaging for graduates like myself and those in college and university is we're worried about career opportunities for us afterwards. Mm -hmm. We worry about cost of living, living here, just renting an apartment, whether we'll be able to have a career that's close to home or if we'll have to go to Toronto or way up north just to find somewhere to make a living. Um, I think that this will be a really great opportunity to open discussion and see what kind of opportunities is there for us here in St. Catharines and in Niagara and to get a positive result and create some positive change around those things. Okay, so it's, uh, there's, I think one of the key words there is, I'm, uh, I'm gonna inject is, is like anxiety. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna yes. leave that for a second and then Alice, Mary, from the college's perspective, a, a graduate, mm -hmm. someone who's going through college, you've, you've made a decision to pursue a career. Mm -hmm. What are you, what are you, what are you getting that you'd like to address at something like the, the mm -hmm. youth forum? Um, a little similar to what Hope said, um, we do uh, have individuals that struggle with mental health. Um, that is, it is an issue and at, uh, if you think about it as a college student, you've gone away from home and you're going into college or university, you're on your own um, and most times uh, it's a struggle to understand that you're on your own, you have to make it work, you have to go to class and in regards to tuition, making it work like some students do have to work three four jobs to make sure they can pay for their tuition um, and with the pressure of school and work um, comes that pressure of mental health and like struggling I'm, I'm anxious how am I gonna make it work tomorrow I have to work till four in the morning uh, but I have to go to class so there is those uh, struggles but then there's also um, the understanding uh, or the pressure to ex uh, excel um, because you did make it to go to college, you're in college, um, there is that pressure you have to be top notch. Um, and it's, it's a reality, we all want to succeed, but with the pressure that comes from friends and family, it also comes uh, hard on a student that's in university or college. Another thing that uh, is uh, a struggle for college students specifically um, is finding work because uh, you've put all your investments into college, I've put all my money in there, I worked so hard, I went to class, now I've graduated, now I've got to get a job. So that is uh, one of the issues that did come up at, at some of uh, our discussions as student council is how are we going to bring the college on board to understand that, yeah, we're doing a good job to educate the students, uh, but how are we assisting these students to get work? Um, so with those struggles comes um, a lot of pressure on students and at the end of the day if you think about it um, I'm, I'm done college okay so now I have to put out my resume now I have to go door-to-door -door, find a job it gets a little um, it hurts a little bit on students mental health so the good thing is the college has been uh, very helpful when it comes to supporting students having counselors on, on site we do a few activities here and there as student council to you know bring students moods back on the table have free food and f always free stuff's good um, <laughs> but also being there uh, to listen so I have a time in my timetable where I just have it free open for students who just want to come in and talk and just mm -hmm. say can I just vent and I'm like yeah I hear you so having those support systems is uh, has been able to help um, combat those issues but there is um, that worry of what's my future going to look like now that I've invested into college. So, yeah. And the inter interesting thing that I'm going to pick up on, on the anxiety over what does my future look like. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> one of the the Workforce Planning Board, which Mario Dedevitis, who's the, the, the CEO locally of the Niagara Workforce Planning Board, came out with a report, him and his team talked about what does the demographic of Niagara look like. And mm -hmm. it's interesting, we actually are keeping our youth here, mm -hmm. but it's upon the graduation of university or college mm -hmm. that they want to stay here, but they don't see the opportunities here. Mm -hmm. And that was an important point through the research that they've done is there's this perception that people want to leave Niagara. Mm -hmm. The youth aren't necessarily interested in leaving. I think we've no. built a very yep. great community here, a, an atmosphere, an environment mm -hmm. that 
provides a lot of opportunity for the lifestyle that the young people want to enjoy. It's that transition into a career where they see mm -hmm. the long-term opportunity. So I just I wanted to bring that up because that's an important for the public to understand mm -hmm. that the youth today are looking to stay in Niagara. They're not looking to leave. Yeah. It's through the opportunities that they're not seeing that is seeing them leave our community. And, and mm -hmm. so we're working hard on that. But getting back to the forum, because it does play into the forum. The forum is for our young residents to get engaged in city issues, provide meaningful, measurable feedback to guide our services as a city, programs, and youth engagement. So you're on the organizing committee. The identified groups, as you've touched on, Hope, have mental health and wellness. Mm -hmm. There's also Alice Mary, the one on volunteerism, community engagement. Also, social justice and inclusivity, I'm going to come back to that one. And then entrepreneurship, which is something that, that we should be talking about as well. Mm -hmm. Touch on the social justice and inclusivity, because I, mm -hmm. I think that's a, that's a topic certain folks maybe not be uncomfortable mm -hmm. who are watching the show today. They may not be comfortable talking about that. So why is that important to youth? Yeah, so, sorry, Alice, yeah, so I think it is important because specific to myself um, as a woman of color, there is that um, stigma of, oh, how, how is she going to fit in? Or, and I, the culture around Canadians, everyone's really nice. So with the, with the, up, with the, um, the understanding that everyone's really nice, sometimes tough conversations are not had, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's very important to understand that yes, there is different people, different individuals, different youths that have different powers and different strengths. So with that understanding, it helps um, the youth develop because I might feel uh, comfortable because I, am, I, I'm, I can speak out, right? But somebody else might not be able to do that because they don't feel that they're the right person to make that comment or make those decisions. So I think it's very important to understand that there is diversity. We Canada, Canada is a very diverse um, country. There's a, people from different parts of the world. But with that understanding should come different strengths as well, right? So I think that being a very important um, aspect to the youth to understand. Um, also, I think uh, Canada is very fair, right? I've been um, to countries that are really unfair to different individuals, um, and it's and it's just because they are who they are. But with what I've learned being part of the Canadian community is everyone has the right to prove themselves, right? And um, I appreciate that so much because I would not be in my position right now. So it is a sometimes a tough conversation to have, but I like the fact that the Canadian community is specific to Niagara College or St. Catharines is very open to um, welcoming individuals from different parts of the world, which makes a, a stronger community. So, 100%. That's yeah. how the country was built. Yeah. Celebrating <laughs> yeah. 150 years of people coming to our community, yes. and yeah. that's how we build communities. And, and Hope, as a, as a young person from St. Catharines, what does inclusivity and social justice mean to you? Um, to me, it's real acceptance of absolutely everyone that they should be um, open to equal treatment and mm -hmm. equal respect, regardless of color, race, ethnicity, mm -hmm. sexual orientation, and gender, and absolutely everything. And that is very important to even bring more to discussion. While it has received a lot of attention mm -hmm. and has been making a lot of progress, where kids mm -hmm. don't feel support to be accepted as an individual and as someone who's unique, mm -hmm. they'll either start to seclude themselves or find yeah. that there is no one out there. They'll become extremely disengaged. And if they become so disengaged where they find that a school isn't a safe place for them, mm -hmm. then they won't go. And it really only spirals downward worse from there. Maybe they don't maybe they stop doing things that they enjoyed to do or get into bad activities and things. So bringing into conversation that it's okay to be different and be mm -hmm. who you are mm -hmm. and still have a voice mm -hmm. and speak out, yeah. it's going to be a really good conversation at the yeah. forum. Good. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to that as well as the entrepreneurship piece. And I think that's an important one. So mm -hmm. you're on the committee that's organizing the Youth Forum. Why was entrepreneurship an important part of that? Um, I think uh, as growing adults, uh, we're all growing to become, you know, successful individuals. Being an entrepreneur is very important because at the end of the day, you don't um, 
feel the need to be stuck to one situation. So it is very important for individuals or youth to understand that if I have a brilliant idea, I can definitely make something of it and make myself some good money off it. So I, th this conversation at the forum is going to spark um, thoughts around I can make it. I can make it as an individual. I can make it as a growing youth um, in the community. So I think it's going to be very interesting just listening to um, these young individuals talking about or expressing or listening um, to what entrepreneurship actually does mean um, to them. Okay, so we've got a, just a few minutes left. Talk a bit about the day, the how it's going to look. So is it just a, the, I'll, I'll start with hope, is it, well, describe, describe how this is going to happen. What's the mm -hmm. form look like from, from your perspective? Um, the form from my, inspect, from my perspective is that it's going to be a day of inspiration and opening doors to opportunities. Um, from the moment they get to walk into the beautiful Performing Arts Center. Mm -hmm. They'll receive tote bags with pens and notes to record their ideas and thoughts throughout the days because those sticky notes will be taken back and will be used. Mm -hmm. that's, an, that's a sense of empowerment. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be led by the MCs who set the tone and the energy and the theme of the day, which is your city, your future. Mm -hmm. And your voices do matter mm -hmm. and will be taken into consideration by leaders at City Council. That's going to be another big boost of energy that leads yes. us into our conversations that are going to be led by facilitators, mm -hmm. guiding questions, and hopefully we can retain a lot of good information and feedback to take back and make positive change with. Mm -hmm. And in terms of Alice, Mary, in terms of the outcome, what are you hoping, what, what's the, as a student council president, mm -hmm. you're involved in a lot of these different functions. Mm -hmm. What do you want to see as a significant outcome of this youth forum? I think uh, what I'd love to see is um, empowered leaders or empowered students, students feeling that, you know, I, I did this, we did this, we went out there, we had fun. And one thing that we might not really recognize uh, that we might get out of this is students meeting other students that have probably the same thought process. Um, as a student leader, meeting other student leaders from other colleges has helped me personally. And with this uh, forum, how, having these students talk to each other and, and share ideas, and um, they will get all this amazing information from the facilitators and everything, but them interacting with each other um, is, is gonna be very powerful in itself because then it's like, it's not just me, there's somebody else who actually thinks like me or is looking for something like me. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing empowered leaders or students feeling that, you know, we can make a difference because at the end of the day, when they grow up to become the future mayors and future MPPs, <laughs> they do, they start, that's where it starts. That's where so, it starts. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you both for the work that you've put in on the committee. Mm -hmm. And we're looking forward to an amazing day on Wednesday, March 22nd. Mm -hmm. It's at the First Ontario Performing Arts Centre in the Robertson Theatre for high school students, it's for college and university students and mm -hmm. young professionals under the age of 25. And we're looking forward to talking to you further in the future about the outcomes from the Youth Forum. We'll have you back on the show. Yep. And we want to make sure that this is going to be an annual Youth Forum because our future is our youth. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of voices that we want to bring to council mm -hmm. and to the larger community and say, this is where we're going as a community. So thank you very much. And thank you for tuning in. This has been an important discussion about our community and where we're going. And as you can see through Hope and Alice Mary, our future is very bright <laughs> in St. Catharines. And we look forward to having a wonderful discussion at the Youth Forum. So until the next time, take care and have a great day.